Hello, my surplus addicts. Now, if you like this video, please like and subscribe and share with your friends. Excuse my flag dangling, it's a windy day. This is a special video. As some of you may have noticed, I have a certain and or particular love for Soviet gear. Now, this video was inspired to me by a reenactment group I'm on called Afghan Reenactment Aesthetics, where I've met some very good friends over the past year from places like Ukraine, the Czech Republic, so on and so forth. Now, I'm going to do an in-depth, or at least as close to in-depth review as possible for the items I have here. So let's go ahead and start working our way around. This is the Panamka, or Panamanka, however many of you may know it, that is commonly seen in many videos revolving around, or even movies revolving around, the Soviet war in Afghanistan. It's somewhat of a staple or an icon, really. As you can see, it's got many ventilation holes inside the back half of the hat, as well as this somewhat, I believe, synthetic leather uh, sweatband around. It doesn't really seem to hold the sweat very well, but or maybe it's more for keeping your head in. Either way, it has some interesting design. It almost looks like the, uh, <laughs> the hat from Curious George. It's got a band here that you can fit through these little slots on each side to create a chin strap. Although I've also seen many instances where troops would just remove it entirely. Either way, it's a very interesting little bush hat that I gotta say has a uniquely Soviet look to it. Now, moving on, we have the paratrooper blue VDV Kalnishka. Now, it's a pretty straightforward shirt. It's got the blue stripes of uh, what I believe would be considered the VDV Airborne Branch. Now, <laughs> This shirt is a summer version, but honestly, worn under a jacket does quite good for winter with the long sleeves. You can roll them up, of course. But uh, what's funny, a little story about this shirt is to my mother, <laughs> she thinks this shirt looks like a woman's shirt, but hate to tell her, this shirt has a very long recent history in modern warfare being the mark of special forces. <laughs> So, overall, not much to really go over, no special features, just a shirt that's very iconic on its own. Now, next is one of my favorite items, the KLMK Silver Bereska or Berioska masking suit. Now, <coughs> excuse me, all. This is a very common item seen in many of the reenactment circles I've been in. As it's a very large suit, it's very lightweight, and it's very good for hot weather. Now, y'all have seen me wear this in a test video, and as many of y'all are aware, it's a very light material. These little inserts here are meant for branches with leaves and things of that nature. It's got adjusters for the hood. It's got two buttons up here and one in the middle somewhere around here. So overall... It's not meant to be really a long-use uniform. It's more or less a disposable masking suit. But many reenactors will take to repairing it and using it repeatedly. Now, the cuffs do have an elastic to them, and so does the, uh, the ankles down there. Now, let's turn this around, and I'll show you some interesting features. You got your hood here. You got more of these inserts on the back. Now, the uh, butt flap, or waist flap, or you want to call it, has been sewn up due to the fact that the three buttons, as you can see, there's a lot of wear. This material is not meant for long-term use, so a good friend of mine in Ukraine told me to just go ahead and sew it up. It'll be all good. Now, you have these belt loops in the back to where if you don't sew it up, you can just more or less basically just... <laughs> You can basically, sorry about that little pause. You can basically just have it, uh, you can basically just have your belt up here and it'll keep your pants up, but it makes it kind of difficult if you have any accessories. Now, 
There's also a pocket back here where you keep the face mask. Now, I'm not going to get it out because it's kind of hard to do this with one hand. But basically, you have a mask that you keep in the back. And paired with the hood, it really does break up your front uh, features, like your face and whatnot. It really is, overall, with the camouflage pattern, a great suit. It just has the perfect green. I'll uh, put up a photo here in a little bit with some background where I'm using it, where you can see it just absolutely just look awesome. Now, next up is the Afghanka. Now, this is one of the most iconic suits of the Soviet era. Now, this suit is obviously just, it, it looks very much like a BDU, but it has some pretty, uh, Unique features on its own that make it unique. Now, it's generally a very thick material, uh, somewhat too thick for summertime in Afghanistan, hence why the masking suit is probably such a popular option. Now, the arms up here are actually Velcro, while the rest of the suit uses button enclosures, button up, pretty much everything. It also, you, it also has a collar liner inside the collar, uh, that's generally the tradition of Soviet uniforms is to have a collar liner. I'm guessing it's to make it cleaner or keep your neck kind of uh, more clean. I'm, I'm not sure. You know, that's something I've got to research. But it's something I've noticed on a lot of Soviet uniforms, even from the World War II era. Now, I've got a Veda Veda patch on the arm. But normally, these are not seen very frequently in Afghanistan. Normally, most people either remove them or just don't use them at all. Others, there were some photos of people like on bases and maybe even outside the wire using them. So I'm guessing it depended on your SOP really, more or less. Now, let's turn this uniform around. And before a quick note, it has a drawstring down here inside the, uh, inside the coat, as well as up here, which is actually kind of reminiscent of the Chinese PLA arid uniform. <laughs> interestingly enough, which leads to my theory that China and the Soviet Union share some design philosophy. Now, if you look at the back, you'll see it's got that tailored, tapered folds. It just, it's a beautiful uniform whenever it's nice and crisp. Now, moving on to the Afghanka cap, we've got a very interesting looking hat. Now, normally these are, these are kind of small in the head. Mine's a little large enough that it fits pretty good. Now, you'll notice it's got the leather band or synthetic leather, maybe Kurza band, as well as this one that goes right where the uh, insignia goes. I just took a knife, made an incision, and that's how I got my uh, insignia in there. Now, most of the times, these on top do not come down, but there's ventilation inside the cap and these can be used to go under under the chin and uh, basically help you keep warm. But most soldiers in Afghanistan did not use it. And really, it's kind of hard to get them down. Now, we've got the trousers. Now, <laughs> these trousers have beautiful, I guess it's called pleating. But either way, they just look very casual almost. These are something I would wear as casual pants if I could fit them right now. <laughs> but... It's got button up uh it's got button up uh cargo pockets and uh they're pretty simple looking pockets but they look beautiful honestly for the aesthetic. It's got button up fly, it's got your standard uh belt loops which actually can fit a Soviet soldier's belt, the one with the brass buckle on the front or even an officer's belt I'm I'm assume. Now on the back like I've mentioned with Chinese uniforms in the past, it shares the same philosophy, uh, philosophy, design philosophy of no back pockets, which I find very interesting. It, it seems much of the communist world around that time developed a lot of their uniforms to have a lot of the same basis of design philosophy based on the Soviet design. And it seems that some of that carried over into the modern era with Chinese uniforms. Now... Let's take a look at what I have down on my table. Of course, you'll recognize the PMG gas mask, which was commonly used during that time in the 1980s. This one was made in 1983. It's a size 2, which is basically a medium. 
and it's got a gas mask bag. Now, normally most soldiers didn't carry this as part of their kit in Afghanistan as there really wasn't any reason to have them. Now, of course, here you'll have your standard formavka, which was worn in the more uh, wintry areas, if I'm not mistaken. And, and a lot of times I've noticed soldiers not even wearing their cap badge. I'm guessing probably for concealment. Now, let's take a look on the inside real quick. I'll show you. It, it's got really some good uh, material in there to keep you warm. Now, down here, we have a guard's badge which you'll see on the uniforms of some guards units, although most of the time a lot of soldiers didn't really wear medals from what I've seen. And uh, you'll also see the medal that was commonly given to soldiers serving in Afghanistan. Now, these medals you'll find in the care of almost any veteran alive today who survived the war in Afghanistan, or even probably held on to by families. If I remember correctly, this says something about along the lines of to uh, the brave Soviet internationalists from the grateful Afghan people. Something along those lines. I'm paraphrasing. It's been a minute since I've looked at it. But you'll see that it's a very beautiful medal. And of course, you got your subdued Soviet star that went on a lot of caps as a uh, basically, again, it a. Uh, allowed you to keep identification for forces as well as uh, being concealment worthy. Now, here's a paratrooper's soft helmet. Now, this actually makes a great helmet liner, honestly, and uh, I don't think you'll really see these much. Uh, if anyone has any reference photos or uh, has any information on where these might have been used, I'd like to see it. I want to say I picked this up some time ago as I thought it would be very interesting to uh, use later on or even learn about. So that'd be very interesting. Now we'll get to the main centerpiece here in a second. But first, I want to talk about the Kurza Sapogi boots. Now, these ones are not historically accurate as I had them modified because my fat ankles couldn't fit into them. <laughs> but what I based this on was the Vedave, or Soviet Airborne style, of basically modifying these boots to make them more, uh, well, usable. Now, one thing you need to know about these boots is you need to wear portianki, or foot wraps of these. These will tear your feet up. I've even tried them out long range for you guys. They're not great long range marching boots. In fact, most Soviet soldiers usually use these in garrison, or use them very rarely, probably if you're riding a vehicle most of the time. Uh, but normally, most Soviet airborne soldiers during the Afghan war would switch to um, the laced boots, or even uh, sneakers, like uh, I believe one was called the uh, Moskva, and the uh, Puma, and Adidas Gazelle. Honestly, check out Red Ivan Airsoft for more information. Uh, he has a great video covering a lot of the options used during the Afghan war. Now, here's a standard metal canteen. Uh, most of these were used in the colder climates, obviously, since it kept your stuff cold. And uh, now, you can't really keep this on your belt very well because this strap, once you unloose it, just comes off. So, it's not one I really like to use that often. But normally, you wouldn't see this in the hot weather as much as it'd make everything hot. Then, you got your standard... Goggles that may have been worn maybe when it was dusty or things like that, or worn by tankers predominantly, uh, aviators, things of that nature, mechanics. Now, I wouldn't use these for uh, mechanic work, although, oh, lordy, I've got some stories where I used them to at least keep stuff out of my eyes a few times. But really, the, these are not safe to use for mechanic work as the lenses are glass. Uh, so... If you're just using it to keep stuff out of your eyes, it's fine. But for dedicated mechanic work, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Now, they have an elastic band on the back. And they've got this nice material on the inside that just feels smooth against your face. Now, piece de resistance. We have the soldier's belt. Now, the soldier's belt, as you can see, I believe is either a authentic leather or a synthetic leather. I think it depends on the year of manufacture. I think this might be a synthetic leather. Now, this is the standard setup from what I've seen, or at least close to standard. You have your, uh, 
you have your matching suspenders, which is good at keeping the belt up as well as keeping your stuff pretty handy nearby. Then you have your four cell AK-74, even AKM magazine pouch, which if I'm not mistaken, these three right here are meant for magazines, while this one is meant for ammunition clips and other things you might need to load up your magazines. Now, this is for your cleaning bottle. Now, I got a metal one in here, which saw some use during the time. And I'll show you what it looks like. Looks like that. That can fit in there, or one of the plastic bottles can. And then you've got your grenade pouch over here which can carry the standard grenade pouch, uh, grenades of the time, the uh, something RD something. I need to do more research. Uh, it's been a minute. But these carry your grenades. It's pretty straightforward. And this is your summertime canteen. Now, I wouldn't recommend using these too often as the plastic, you don't know where it was made or what could leach out of it. I I've drank out of it a few times, but eventually I stopped because I did a test on it, and it seems that the plastic is barely safe uh, in terms of contamination for water. Although the test may have been a little inconclusive because I was using water from a from my old apartment that may have been <laughs> contaminated. But uh, either way, just be careful using these. Now, the top can be used as a cup for water. And of course, you've got a chain here and your top cap which can be opened. Now, it's a very interesting little canteen. Of course, it's very big by today's standard, but it's very flimsy plastic. Now, if you look in there, it's pretty much just whatever. It smells, I know that. <laughs> but honestly, that's just about going to do it for this quick, in-depth review of all these items. Um, I hope you found this video informational. And uh, that reminds me one more thing. I forgot to do on the blouse that I always show is it has an inside pocket where you can keep things. And I believe, yep, it's got two on each side of the breast. So that's a little something about that I forgot to mention earlier. But I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, later I'll review some more Soviet uniforms I got from the 1980s. And until then, I want to thank all my friends on uh, Afghan Reenactment Aesthetics for all the support, all the help. And uh, I just want to wish them safety during this time of crisis, and I just hope everybody stays safe. And I just want you all to have a good day, my surplus addicts, and keep enjoying the hobby, and just keep loving life. Y'all have a good one.